So you've been invaded by the blue-green death known as cyanobacteria. <laughs> it's not actually that bad. There's a number of ways to treat it. I want to tell you what I did right now. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about cyanobacteria and what I did to battle it. Battle it might not be an appropriate choice of words because you can't really ever defeat cyanobacteria. It's made to survive in harsh environments, and it's always been there. It goes back to well into the early stages of the Earth's development, and it was one of the first producers of oxygen and the primary producer of oxygen for a long time. If you want, you can delve really deep into the science of cyanobacteria. It's pretty fascinating if you're into biology. There's a lot of different versions of it too. There's, a, it's, there's not just one kind of cyanobacteria. It grows on just about anything. It seems to thrive in areas where oxygen is not being well distributed and uh, nutrients kind of build up. And in this tank with just this little aquaponics filter in the back, it doesn't get a lot of circulation. Plus, I kind of just let this tank go for a long time. I mean, I didn't do much with it. I put my bed in there and I maintained it like I would all the other tanks, but I don't think it's got nearly the filter turnaround that these other ones do. That plus with the focus on a bunch of other aquariums that I had going at the time, I just let that one go. I actually planned on breaking it down and rescaping the whole thing and just starting over. But then I thought, well, maybe I'd like to use some of those plants in another aquascape. So I went down to the aquarium and uh, I got my good buddy Leah to recommend a product. And she sent me home with this. And reading the box, I was like, wow, I don't think this is my problem. <laughs> it says treatment for stains from red cyanobacteria right there across the little ribbon. So I was like, well, is this for salt water? And it, it apparently they're alike enough to where this will work for a number of different common aquarium bacteria issues. And I'm not sure what the active ingredient is. You know, I don't know if it outright lists the active ingredient in this, but I'm gonna look it up and I'll put it here if I can find it on their website. So it states right on the top of the box that it's safe for your reef tanks and also invertebrates and fish and desirable bacteria and that sort of thing. So I wasn't too worried about the effect of the fish, but just to be safe and because I could, I pulled the betta that I kept in there out and all the shrimp. The shrimp went uh, actually into the two gallon, which now they're breeding in there. So they really like that little two gallon tank. And uh, the betta went to the fluval edge 12 gallon, which in a previous video I recommended not putting a betta in, but I got so many comments that said, we're doing it and it works fine. I decided to try it and he seems pretty happy in there. I'm getting distracted. Okay, back to the story. So this tank was looking rough, but I wanted to use the plants for another aquarium or reset it up. So I wasn't sure what I could do. And uh, since Leah recommended this product and I tend to try out products on my channel, I thought I'd try it out and just see what happens. Since the first step was obviously to see the results, uh, I scraped the glass in the front of the aquarium only. So I didn't really pull anything out or try to clean it up too much. You'll see it's terrible and nasty in there. And uh, I scraped the glass off of the aquarium, the next thing I did was apply the treatment. Uh, it was really easy to calculate the treatment because it's one level capful for every 10 gallons. So I put my one capful in and I mixed it up kind of right in the water. You could, I've seen this demonstrated on other channels and that had a really smart idea that I didn't think of, which is just to pre-mix it in some of the aquarium water, like in a separate container. You could add that one scoop, mix it up, and then just pour the whole thing in. Now I had high hopes for this like totally destroying everything by the next day. What I ended up with was uh, I could tell things were happening but it hadn't really done the trick yet. Uh, it does recommend that within 48 hours you do a water change. It had been 24 hours so at this point I just went ahead and cleaned it up and uh, did a little bit of its work for it. So, you know, so I just kind of cleaned up the stuff that, and you could tell it was dying. It would look like it was kind of on the run, but it had only been 24 hours. I applied the treatment again 
went back the next day. It says you can apply it, you know, if you need to apply it twice. There's no fish in there or anything to worry about that way. So I went ahead and did the treatment again. I did a water change the next day and then I just let it sit for several days. One really important note that you need to think about is uh, if you apply a treatment, especially usually a chemical treatment, or maybe you use hydrogen peroxide, another popular way to kill this stuff, uh, if you don't go back and fix what caused it in the first place, which might be poor circulation, uh, large amounts of sunlight, all the different reasons that cause this stuff, if you don't kind of deal with that to some degree, it's bound to come back. So it's really important that you kind of hit things on multi fronts. That being said, just to see how well the product worked, I kind of did nothing. So I didn't even re aquascape it or anything. I just let it sit for a long time. And I noticed that it didn't come back like any other time, like normal water change, I'll clean it up. Uh, any other time it would be back within two or three days that it would start to climb across the glass and stuff. This time it was gone and it stayed gone. And I was pretty impressed with that. And it's continued to stay gone. Now the treatment's been, uh, I can't even remember when I treated it. Uh, here's the date. But the bacteria is still gone. It hasn't come back. I decided just to rescape this. Kind of a soft rescape. I just moved things around. <laughs> I'm not even gonna cover a whole lot of it because it was kind of boring. I had some plants inappropriately planted. Clones don't know how to plant plants. And uh, I decided just to kind of rearrange some stuff to make it a little bit visually more interesting. So here I've got another tank that's wide open, ready for another fish. Probably cycled. I haven't had a fish in there for about a month. But I'm sure that there's enough organics in there that it's probably fine. I'll have to do a water test and kind of make sure it's okay. But it looks great. I mean, there's still some traces of like where it had some algae problems before and that sort of thing. I didn't cut every leaf off the Anubias and that sort of stuff. Uh, I let some of the ones that are kind of ugly stay on there. Not a lot, but I cut a ton of stuff off, but I left a little bit of those leaves on there just so to help it get through. Uh, it's got a lot of new growth already. I've, I've rearranged where the plants are in relation to the light and that sort of thing. And I think, I think it's going to be a more successful setup. So I'm looking forward to putting something in there and uh, enjoying it. Cyanobacteria free. There's a lot of places to go to learn about cyanobacteria on the web. I'm including a few of them in the description down below. That's all I have for you this week, folks. All your bliss. Fight that bacteria. I'll see you soon.